Well, it's time now for Perspective. My guest today makes it his mission to head to the world's most inhospitable environments, pushing himself to his physical and psychological limits. His aim, to find out how our brains adapt to extreme situations and how that, might, how that knowledge might help us as our planet becomes ever more unpredictable. Well, that man is Christian Klo, Franco-Swiss seasoned explorer and also author of uh, Exploring Tomorrow. Can we be explorers uh, in the 21st century or, or potentially more accurately, how to explore the 21st century. Thank you very much indeed for coming on to speak to us here Thank at Advanced 24. It's a pleasure. Now, you're interested in seeing how extreme conditions uh, impact upon our cognitive function. Where has that quest taken you? What extreme environments have you experienced firsthand? Oh, yeah. I, look, I use extreme environments like uh, Dartolut in Iran. It's a desert, really hot, it's the hottest in the world, in fact, plus 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, in Siberia too, minus 60 degrees, uh, Amazonia rainforest, uh, 44 degrees, 100 percent of humidity, and Patagonia, the channels of Patagonia, which are which is a place is the most unpredictable in the world. And what did you find? How do our brains react when they're pushed to those sorts of limits? Well, he, he worked hard, and it, he, he needs a lot of energy to try to find new kind of solutions, to try to adapt itself. And in fact, it, it did it. I mean, my brain really adapted itself. It changed some parts in the brain, uh, physiologically, not only just psychologically. Physiologically, we have some changes in my brain. So that means that our brain can really fight and adapt itself when facing new kind of situations. And for those uh, of us not familiar with exactly how you would go about that, what sort of experiments were you doing on yourself? Well, we use, of course, before uh, the training inside the environment, we use um, MRI to try to m map my brain before and after the experimentation. So we have an, an idea of what happened in my brain and that inside the environment, we have some tools, some exercise to do, some cognitive adaptations exercise to do. And so we can mix both inf information to try to understand what really happened in my brain. And what were your most surprising findings, things that your brain did that you weren't necessarily expecting? Well, it could be something that people know, but it's really inter interesting to see that with science, is that wonderness, wonderness is so important. I mean, you need to have some pleasure. If you don't find a pleasure when you're in a hard situation, when you're in a situation you don't understand, if you can't find something to please you, it's really hard to find a way to go further. You always look just back if you don't, can't see something really nice to go with. And so that's really interesting to see that. And did you feel that yourself? You felt yourself experiencing wonder even as you were facing extremely harsh conditions? Yeah, when you are in really harsh conditions, I mean, suddenly the, the conditions just blow away. That, that, put you in a, in, in a state you can't understand. Your brain is just fighting as much as it can. Suddenly you find something really nice, like a sunset or a sunrise, like a bird, like a small animal, or a memory of your, of your, your, your beloved. And so suddenly you find, OK, there's a reason to fight. There's a reason to fight a solution. And your brain began to fight it and to create new solutions. And you think there might be an evolutionary function to that feeling of wonderment in difficult situations? Yeah, we know for sure that you can't really change something if it doesn't link with your emotions. So that's maybe the main thing we have to do now, because we have, we, we have to fight a lot to change our paradigm about what will happen tomorrow. And we need to forge and to, to, to form people with their emotions, and not only with information on, yeah, you have to do that and that and that. But it's not linked with us. What is linked with us is love, is fear, is, is all these kind of emotions we feel. And with these, we can fight something. And you've been talking about how you know, our brains in these extreme situations, what, they, what that can teach us about uh, the environments we're likely to encounter uh, in the future, rising sea levels, uh, more unpredictable weather patterns. Is there anything that we can do concretely to prepare for this changing <coughs> world? We can. First things, we have to accept the situation. The acceptance is something really important. We have a situation. We need to face it. Not, not to decide, that, OK, it's finished, I can't do anything, but just to accept what is the situation for real and then trying to find the leverage I have to fight it. We can't do any, any, everything. We can't change everything in just one, one second. So we need to find one action, one leverage I can just put in place and act really. And that will help me to, to consider, OK, now I'm, I'm an actor of this situation. I can do something. And can you give me a concrete example of what that sort of action might be? 
Oh, it might be to, to decide not to use plastic anymore, for example. Uh, but to do that, you need to think, OK, what, what happens if I use plastic? Where goes the plastic? OK, it goes in the ocean. I, lo I love ocean, so I want to protect ocean, so I decide not to use any more any plastic. But if you just decide, I don't want to use any plastic anymore, it, it's not enough. You need to know why you decide to not use plastic anymore. Now, in this internet age, the world can seem extraordinarily knowable, almost as if nothing's left to discover for the first time. Is that the case, or do you think there are still extraordinary things to discover on planet Earth? There, there is, in all field, a lot of things to be discovered. I mean, if we consider we, we, we don't have anything more to discover, we consider we know everything, so we don't have any, any job to do anymore. We can just go away. No, that's not true. In every field, everything we can find new things, new solutions, new ideas. And of course, you have all the space area, which is totally unexplored. All oceans are unexplored. And we are unexplored. Our brain, our stomach, all these things, we don't know anything about it. And do you think that in this extraordinarily joined up internet age, there is still that real passion for, for learning, for discovery in society? Oh yeah, more than ever. I mean, we had, maybe 20 years ago, people saying, OK, it's finished, we don't have to, to, to learn anymore. But it's not true anymore now. And we, we have a lot of persons in the field, in laboratories, who try to understand, to seek new kind of information. And the passion is, is here and there every day, every second. And now you are an explorer, you travel a huge amount. I imagine you take quite a few flights, that you've uh, taken quite a few car rides during your exploring. How do you, uh, how do you square that up with clearly a desire to, uh, to be environmentally friendly, to be eco-responsible. Well, there's two things here. We have to think, OK, if I will use a flight or a train or anything else, does it really worth it with, this, with the thing I think I will discover? That's the first thing. And the second thing is we have to consider what is really a problem on our Earth. Internet is much more a problem than a flight, for example. Sending an email now use more CO2 than sending a letter with a, with, by post. So finally, all what we do can be a problem with environment. We just have to think, do really I need to do that? Christian Clo, uh, explorer and also author, thank you very much indeed for coming on to thank speak you. to us here on France 24. A pleasure.